Good morning, church. Welcome to our online worship service as we gather together virtually in our homes or wherever we might be today or whenever you listen to this. Uh, we're glad that you can still join this way and we are still the church out there wherever we're at in our lives. I want to again thank John and Linda for helping out and Nancy uh, for accompanying us today. A couple of announcements. Um, the men's chicken dinner was a, a big success. Uh, they had way more people than they expected, so they must have uh, done a good job promoting it. But they uh, did run out of chicken and uh, feel, felt bad about that, but we had, I think they said they made about $1,400. So we want to thank the men for providing the chicken and sweet corn and their work, as well as all those who supported that. Next Sunday, uh, we plan to have our outdoor service in the pavilion, and uh, we're hoping the weather will hold up. If we would have bad weather, our plan is to do it the next Sunday, the 30th. But uh, right now, we'll plan on having our outdoor service, and we will still live broadcast over Facebook um, during the outdoor service, too. And also, just to uh, update, Marty Iverson has had some complications, so uh, she's in the hospital. When, uh, she's still in our prayers, but I just want to lift her up as we remember her in prayer, too. I think that's all I have for announcements, so we'll begin with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. Trusting in the mercy of God, we now confess our sin as we take a moment of silence first to name before God those sins we are aware of. Reconciling God, we confess that we do not trust your abundance and we deny your presence in our lives. We place our hope in ourselves and rely on our own efforts. We fail to believe that you provide enough for all. We abuse your good creation for our own benefit. We fear difference and do not welcome others as you have welcomed us. We sin in thought, word, and deed. By your grace, forgive us. Through your love, renew us and you and your spirit lead us, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Your sins are all forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Just one additional note about the outdoor service, a reminder that we are expecting people to wear face masks and we'll be providing hand sanitizer and uh, ushering you in and out. So we're going to do all the precautions that we need to do to make that safe next Sunday. We continue now with our gathering hymn. <laughs>
Let us join together on praying the prayer of the day. Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is taken from the 56th chapter of Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah calls upon Israel to do justice in view of God's imminent intervention to save. Righteousness and obedience define who belongs to the Israelite community, not race, nationality, or any other category. We read, Thus says the Lord, Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted at my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. Thus says the Lord God, who, sup, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather them, I will gather others to them, besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We read responsively Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. May God give us blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe. The Holy Gospel for today is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, verses 21 through 28. Glory Thank to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus teaches his disciples that true purity is a matter of the heart rather than outward religious observances. Almost immediately, this teaching is tested when a woman considered to be a religious outsider approaches him for help. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Israel. But, but she, she came, came and knelt before, before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, and even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Dear friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the political season is heating up as we move towards Election Day. And we are going to be bombarded with political commercials. They've already started. We've seen them on TV already. But they're just going to get worse. I am thankful I have a remote control that I can mute those commercials and not listen to them. Although, I'll admit occasionally I will listen to a political ad just to see what they're saying. 
And as you know, one of the strategies of these political ads is to take the opponent's words of, out of context. Find a soundbite, find a few words, a sentence, put that in the ad to make it sound like this person is saying something very offensive or something that you would not agree with. And then you wonder, I wonder, did they take these words out of context? How did this candidate actually use those words? Well, in today's gospel lesson, we hear Jesus speak something that sounds very offensive. He basically calls this Canaanite woman a dog. And we might wonder, was this taken out of context? Did Jesus really mean that? Because it doesn't sound like Jesus. Well, Let's take a closer look at the context and see if this is what he meant. Pastor Courtney Allen Crump says, If I were in charge of Jesus' public relations, I'm not sure that I would want this story about him getting around. If this story gets around, people might really misunderstand him. Can't you just imagine the soundbite on the news? Playing the audio of Jesus' words to the woman over and over again. The optics are not good for a guy building a movement on love your neighbor as yourself and love your enemies. So what is the context? We're told Jesus and his disciples are going to Tyre and Sidon. The Tyre and Sidon is known to be Gentile territory and Jews would not normally go there. They would avoid those places. So it's surprising Jesus is going there, but we're not told why they're going there. They go, as they're going there, they are interrupted, confronted by a Canaanite woman. She's desperate. She shouts out, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. Now, this woman is not only a Gentile, which would be bad enough, she's also a Canaanite. And Canaanites were the sworn enemies of the Jews throughout history going back years and years, generations. They hated each other. The Canaanites did not believe in the God of Israel. So, she is a desperate person. She comes to Jesus, and she calls him an interesting title, Son of David. Now, only, really, only Jews would call Jesus Son of David how she even knows about that title, because son of David is actually a code word or another way of saying Messiah. Now, we don't know whether she really accepts him as son of David, as the Messiah, or whether she's just using this title to help get something for her daughter, help her daughter get healed. And she'll call Jesus whatever she thinks he wants to hear to have healing for her daughter. Or maybe she knows something about Jesus. Initially, Jesus just ignores her. Doesn't even pay any attention to her. Which is a little bothersome. Why would Jesus just ignore somebody in need? As if encouraged by Jesus' lack of response, the disciples tell Jesus, send her away, get her out of here. She just is bothering us. She's shouting after us all the time. And Jesus says, I was sent only for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Jews. He's telling her she is out of the scope of his mission. He's not here for her. He's here for the Jews. And again, we wonder, where's the compassion? This, I came across a, co a quote by Sharon Ring. She says, this incident in Jesus' life was a time when he was caught with his compassion down. Now, normally this woman maybe would have given up at this point. Pretty clear that Jesus doesn't want to help her. But she doesn't give up. She persists. And now she actually kneels before Jesus and she says, Lord, help me. Do you hear the, the desperation in her voice? I can. Lord, help me. 
She is doing anything she can for her daughter. And a parent will do that. A parent will do anything they can for their daughter. Well, Jesus responds to, Lord, help me with harsh, offensive language. It is not fair to take the children's food, children being the Jews, and throw it to the dogs, the Canaanites. He's basically calling her a dog which is a term of scorn for Gentiles. Why would Jesus say that? Well, again, this woman could have given up at this point. Jesus is calling her a dog, doesn't want to help her, pretty clear. But she persists. This unrelenting woman continues to push for what she most needs, the healing of her daughter. So she says, okay, Lord, yes, Lord, you may be sent for the Jews, children of Israel, the lost sheep. I'll give you that. I won't, I won't debate that, won't deny that, won't argue that point. But, he, she says, even the dogs get to eat the crumbs from the master's table. Even the leftovers, she says. That's all I'm asking for. Just the crumbs. And that will be enough for me. She must have seen Jesus' healing powers, knew he could do amazing, miraculous things. And she says, all I need is the crumbs. She, this woman reminds me of John Lewis, the late black senator who died, who stirred up trouble, good trouble. This woman is stirring up good trouble, forcing Jesus to re-examine his mission, his bias. So finally, finally, on the third attempt, Jesus responds with, woman, Great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And we're told her daughter was immediately healed. Which the word for heal is also saved. The way this woman, Jesus treats this woman, initially at least, seems to contradict how we picture, how we understand Jesus. We think of Jesus as being perfect, as being loving, as being compassionate, as being kind, helping all those in need. And our first lesson from Isaiah tells us about God who welcomes the foreigners, shows compassion to the foreigner, gathers the outcasts. So a lot of people have tried to explain or defend what Jesus says here and how he treats her. I'm tempted to do the same. I would like to try to defend Jesus. And I think I have done this in other sermons. Some might say, well, Jesus was just tired, having a bad day. Or some will say that he was ex simply expressing the attitude of his disciples. It wasn't his view. He was just kind of showing the disciples their bias. Or some people say, well, the word he used for dog wasn't necessarily derogatory. He was talking about a lap dog. But when you look at the word, it's, it's derogatory. Or, some people say well, Jesus was just testing the woman to see how strong a faith she had, how determined she was. Some say, well, we, don't, we aren't able to see his facial expression or his tone of, hear his tone of voice. And if we could see him, hear him, we would, could tell that he wasn't serious. But what if he was? What if Jesus meant what he said? Jesus is fully human and fully divine. And it's, like, it's possible that Jesus did believe he was sent by God for the Jews. And there is scriptural basis. There's scriptural support for that. This is how he maybe initially understood his mission. So maybe this Canaanite woman was, help, was helping Jesus to re-examine his mission, to expand it, to go beyond the Jews. And we find out Jesus actually does expand his mission. At the end of the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus tells his disciples to go make disciples of all nations. All nations. Pastor Courtney Allen Crump says in her sermon on this lesson that a lot of the healing stories in the Bible have Jesus breaking down the boundaries. He's the boundary breaker. He goes to the 
the tax collectors, and he goes to the prostitutes, and he goes to the sinners and the outcasts. But these are all Jews. In this story, the Canaanite woman is the boundary breaker. She's breaking through the accepted boundaries. She's the protagonist. She's willing to address a man in public. A woman speaking to a woman, a woman speaking to a man was forbidden. A Gentile speaking to a, a Jewish rabbi, no less, was forbidden. This unnamed Canaanite woman is willing to risk all the social, religious, cultural norms to receive healing for her daughter. She takes a huge risk crossing this boundary of what was acceptable. And she's not deterred by Jesus' lack of compassion, response, insulting reaction. A parent will do whatever a parent will do for the love of their child. So, the question is, is this really faith? Or is this woman desperate to do whatever she can for her daughter? I think it's both. Out of love comes faith. Love leads to faith. And so we're let, Jesus finally says to this woman, great is your faith. Now I'm trying to picture how the disciples heard that when Jesus says, great is your faith. A little bit ago, not all that long ago, Peter was out in the water in the storm, walking for a little while a ways, and then he's distracted by the storm, the wind, and the waves, and he starts to sink and Jesus tells Peter, you of little faith, why did you doubt? To me, if you walk on water, that takes a bit of faith. But Jesus tells Peter he has little faith. And this Canaanite Gentile, great faith. I'm guessing the disciples weren't real happy to hear that. They were probably surprised and even offended. But this woman was hoping or trusting that God's mercy was for all people. Even her. Even those beyond the perceived boundaries that Jesus had for his own ministry. And she was not going to be distracted like Peter was. She was not going to be distracted. Well, we too can become blind to humanity. We can become blind to the needs of people who are not like us. People who do not look, think, or talk like us. And like Jesus, we can get it wrong. We can make negative generalizations about whole groups of people based on one encounter or based on a history that has defined who we think our enemies are. But thankfully, we can get our hearts and our minds changed too. God will place people in our lives who will help us see our bias, our prejudices, and that all people's lives matter to God, and therefore to us. We're, that we're all connected to each other. We are kin. You maybe have heard the word kin, kinship. We are all kin to each other. We all belong to each other. So, so we have to commit ourselves time and time again to the way of Jesus, to the Hard, holy work of racial justice. We hear about that in that first lesson too, that God it does desire for there to be justice. To healing, dismantling every prejudice and policy that, that privileges the people who are white. So this means that we have to do more than just know that there are no boundaries or dividing lines when it comes to God's love. We have to live and show up and speak out and advocate for just and equitable ways of living together. For we belong to God and we belong to each other. So may we be as brave, as persistent, as fierce as this Canaanite woman was who shows us that faith, faith is not a passive thing but active and demanding. What faith demands is the promises of God are for all people and are to be fulfilled in and through us. Here, today, now. Amen.
And now may the peace that passes all of our understanding keep our hearts and minds of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. We'll now sing our next hymn. Let us now confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Lord, you gather the church to be part of your mission as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. As Jesus acknowledged the great faith of a woman from outside his people, help your church discover and find blessing in the faith of people we might reject. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have blessed us with the bounty of the earth. Grant your grace to all your creatures that the earth will flourish. Relieve waters choked by garbage, renew soil stripped of nutrients, and refresh the air all creatures need to live. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You call the nations to be glad and sing for joy, that your way be known among all the nations of the world, now divided by competing interests, contending alliances, and consumed by enormous worry. 
Bless us and make your face shine upon all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show unexpected mercy, kindness, and generosity. We pray for all those affected by the derecho winds that have beaten down crops and caused much damage across the Midwest. May the people affected find the support they need to restore and rebuild. We pray for those who do not have enough, for outcasts in our village, cities, and towns, and for those who need your healing. Especially today, we pray for Mike, Vaughn, John, and Marty, as well as those we name aloud or in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you we live and move and have our being. Grant our congregation, English Lutheran Church of Bateman, grace to find our life refreshed in you. Accompany us in the rhythms of late summer. Give us rest and renewal and strengthen us for mission in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your eternal promises are more than we could ever imagine. As you gather all the saints, join us all with them on the great day of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. This is the time that we would have our offering. So again, just a reminder to uh, please send in your offering or use the online giving option. And we continue to thank you for your, your giving, your support, and your generosity. Um, this uh, act of offering is not only just keeping the church going uh, to pay the bills, but it's also an act of faith, especially during this time of pandemic. Uh, to show that we trust God and that God will provide for us as we give back to God what he's given to us. It's also an act of uh, showing our thanks to God through our offering. Now we continue with the words of institution. So if you have uh, bread or wine or grape juice available, you would have that ready. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you're with someone, you can give them the, the bread or create crack or whatever you're using and say the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. And may the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. And now receive the blessing. Neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit the Comforter bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.